Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Prisoner, the newest album from Ryan Adams, not Brian. Um, joining me this week, because Pierce has all kinds of, oh god, why the fuck Poundland, why are you making him work this hard now, is... Clark and I. Hello, everybody. So, yeah, um, slightly last minute uh, bringing in of Clark and I because um, it was sort of like on Facebook, I, I just went, so who would be free to help me jibber jabber about a new album? Yes, I took him up on the offer because I thought, why the hell not? I have never done anything like this before and I need to get prepped anyway because. Um, I am considering having a radio show soon where I highlight all sorts of video game music and the like and plug people's bands, all that sort of thing. Um, I'd either have it as a podcast, a, a lot like um, Once More With Feeling, or as a separate thing on maybe another slot on someone else's site. Once I get that up and running, I'll be sure to um, link you, Edmund, and then you can tell everyone all about it on your show. <laughs> Well, I'll make sure to have links in various descriptions and whatnot, so um, we can probably organise a regular thing, so... Yeah, I mean, I'd love to have you on as well, on, on my show, once it gets up and running. Um, so yeah, that's all very exciting stuff that will be down the pipeline. Um, I mean, there's God knows how many things that I need to get organised. <laughs> Endless to-do lists are my aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> Never ending. Well, for the past few days, I've been working on getting my pyramid head cosplay finished, and it's sort of like... Ah, brilliant. Oh, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing that when it's done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite a proc bleh, procurer of cosplays, but I tend to not have much room to make the big things. Mm. So, yeah, that's quite impressive. Well, this is... So, Edmund, um... Uh, what in this current album that we've been listening to, Prisoner, really stands out to you? What did you find was something that uh, what was unique about it? Oh, oh, what was unique about it? Uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, oh, I'd say just have a look through my notes. Um, I'd say uniqueness it was admittedly a bit lacking unfortunately it did feel a bit um like a lot of brit pop and country music yeah that's definitely how i felt about it i mean there's a lot of it in there that is quite evocative but i wasn't necessarily feeling those emotions because it's all about love like it really is and about heartbreak and about uh, all this sort of uh, mental health that's focus around that I think and a lot of the mental health issues I've had in the past have been absolutely nothing to do with that so I couldn't relate to it and I think that's the key thing was a lot of people uh, with these kind of pop artists especially people like Bowie and um, you know Nirvana and Nine Inch Nails all the lyrics in there is, is it's relatable but only for certain people it, I felt like it may have fallen a little bit on deaf ears somewhat biased but um, I think I can appreciate it for other points aside from the lyrics, a lot of the uh, merits in there for me were some of their like underlying synth sounds. It's like, like a, quite a nice, um, I've forgotten what song it is in now, but it's quite a nice sort of chorus that goes, and it's, it's like an inverted pedal at the top of the chorus that sort of flows through as the guitar is changing chords, and it's really nice. It gives an otherwise quite a uh, in unique album, if that's the word, uh, a more unique flavour, and it, it works. Yeah, I do relate to some of the songs that relate to mental health issues in connection yeah. with romantic feelings a bit more, because some of the issues I have had have been connected with issues of the heart and all that sort of thing, especially with the latter half of last year, which I choose to just go, nope, it didn't happen. The latter half of last year is just, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's it's definitely something where if I had gone through those phases, I would, I would be able to uh, appreciate it in a different light, I think. And that's probably what I'm going to do with a lot of the albums that I've been listening to this year, is that I've, I've felt a bit numb emotionally because I, I've been through a sort of phase in my life where nothing 
good or bad is happening. This is kind of a completely neutral state. So um, in a way, I'm grateful for it. But in a way, I'm kind of sitting here going, come on, can't something interesting happen, even if it is bad? So that then at least I can... I can say, hey, I feel your pain, man, to all these brilliant songwriters who are generally quite talented, at least as far as their lyrics are concerned, and say, you know, I get it. I, 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 I get what you're, what you're singing about. But it's, it's weird. Um, part of my issue is um, I have just been raised on all the instrumental musics. Um, I really don't have the kind of mindset for lyrics. I don't read much. So, yeah, falling on deaf ears, again, it's, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. Whereas I find that the songs that really resonate with me are the songs where the lyrics and music feel like they've been very specifically crafted together. Yes, when one reflects another, that's yeah, that's a brilliant point because you don't ever feel like one is overpowering the other. I mean, I've gone through this issue where I've been writing songs and I've sort of built up layers and layers and layers of chords and melodies and gone oh it needs lyrics now because because of a context uh, perspective and not a kind of songwriting perspective it's like i want this music to be judged this way which which is why it needs lyrics but then there's no room for lyrics so they the best kind of music like that is where the lyrics feed off the melody and then the chords and it goes back to the lyrics and like a call and response thing even and you can play about with loads of different compositional styles in that way. I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head that are really good at this. But um, I bet you I'll think of one later later on as we, as we go through our discussion. Yeah, it, it'll be a case of in the middle of the night, it'll suddenly spring to you and it's all... Yeah, I'll be like, Edmund, quick, get on Discord again. <laughs> I've just remembered... <laughs> Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I, of course, regular listeners will be expecting me to bring him up. Uh, Devin Townsend. Um, ah, yes, a name I've heard many times, but have failed to give a good sit down and listen to. Um, a lot of my friends are really into him, yeah. Uh, well, Devin Townsend, I I pretty much owe my life to his music. Ah, I see, why's that? Um, when I first started listening to him... I was in a really dark place. I was, not put too fine a point on it, I was suicidal. All right. And when I started listening to his music, it actually helped balance me out. It helped to bring me back into the light, even if just briefly. It's amazing the power of music when it can um, change people like that. I personally have never listened to anything of that same kind of uh, uh, scope it, that uh, where I've been in such a low point in my life. But thinking about the lowest points of my life, I would say a lot of prog rock actually really helped. I was listening to Yes, um, so I, it's a bloody wonderful band, um, when I was um, working at KFC. And there was um, one evening where I I just I'd practically given up, like I'd had a terrible shift and was just thinking about my life, walking all the way home, and think I I it had been a few months after I'd finished my university degree and was was feeling maybe a little bit suicidal, but there would, there would only ever be feelings at the time. I I wasn't strong enough to act upon them, and there were various uh, songs within. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the Yes album now that it was. I think it was um, drama, uh, and there's a song in there called uh, "Machine Messiah," and it, it changes so often, and um, and it's got all these different sections that are building up and moving downwards, and it's so evocative. But you don't have to really listen to the lyrics to get that evocativeness out, and I think that's where they shine, is because they've got the melody writing to complement the sections where there is no lyrics. And that's just it. You can't have a song where you just write lyrics and lyrics and lyrics and hope that it will have the same emotions as something like Bowie. You know, they have to play off each other. I mean, my fa- my personal absolute favourite, with we're talking for Pink Floyd fans, what Dark Side of the Moon is. Oh, I see. Um, absolute favourite Devin Townsend song and... You know, it would be in the top two songs regardless of genre type category. Yeah. The Death of Music. 
I that does ring a bell actually. I don't think I, I, I can't say I've heard it. You might have seen me post it on Facebook because it's one of those. Now this is one of my favourite songs. Just listen to it. Ah, I I, I yeah. It. That's the greatest song ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's the sort of it builds and it builds. It actually starts out with a very low whispering and the music just gradually builds up and builds up into a crescendo and it just when i listen to it i get all of the you know wait so it it builds up and builds up into a build up because a crescendo is a build up <laughs> is that what you mean yeah <laughs> no, i get you i get you um but yeah, it just it gets everything. Um, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck raising, the sh- the Which chills. Is, it's the sort of song where like nothing feels out of place because they're the kind of songs where I, I try to give it some criticism, even if they're not listening, because everyone needs criticism as a songwriter or even as just an avid listener of music, so you can sort of understand how it all works. Um, and there are genuinely those songs that I have where absolutely nothing feels out of place it's all fits together like a jigsaw puzzle and there's nothing it's like if you were to write it there's nothing that you would change and that is bliss yeah is, is that song quite like that to you like yes it is exactly yeah. that it's all everything right. you know because devon townsend has sort of the soft vocals and the harsh vocals and he manages to work them in such a way where right. you know when those vocals are meant to come and they come at just the right moment yeah would you say there's also parts where uh there's sort of new uh, transitions and sections that are completely unexpected and they sort of surprise you yeah or is it quite straightforward oh, okay so it's a mixture of the two kind of because i feel like surprise and uh, uh things that you just wouldn't expect can be just as important in music as a formula that you do expect that they, they both um yeah well, Devin Townsend very much is a prog metal artist, and he, you can tell that he's taken influence from, yes, Pink Floyd, um, Genesis, you know, all the big prog bands, and he just knows how to work things. Gotcha. I can't say I've listened to much Genesis. I feel a bit put off by Phil Collins' voice. I'd have to go all the pre-Phil Collins stuff. I always feel like a bit of a pariah when I say this, but it's sort of like, I don't like anything after Trick of the Tale, which is the first Phil Collins album. Yeah. I'm always much more of a fan of Peter Gabriel's. Uh, I've always been a fan. Well, I'm not a fan of Phil Collins's solo stuff. I'm a fan of Peter Gabriel's. I actually grew up listening to things like Sledgehammer and all that sort of thing. Sledgehammer is absolutely brilliant track for me because um, it's one of those tracks where I can really, really sort of get engaged in the music video because it's on one of my favourite animation studios, Ardman, who of course are famous for Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep and um, Creature Comforts, all them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh, it's just because it's one of their first. I think it's it it predates Wallace and Gromit by a good couple of years. Um, and it's just got this dancing chicken and it just gives birth to two other chickens and it's got a microphone. <laughs> it's completely nonsensical in that style, but it's it's a weird juxtaposition because the... I mean, the lyrics of the song are quite... Yeah, you, you could have anything. Um, you could have all this stuff. Uh, but it's the the melody and the, the sort of songwriting of everything else, like the chords and the structure, is quite straightforward. There's nothing really surprising or... or or like enticing or sort of uh, mystical about it. It's 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 quite formulaic sort of just pop writing with your sort of eighties. I mean, what actually what era was it? I I think it's eighties. I'm not sure. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the sort of eighties synthesizers you've got in there and the um, twangling of the guitar. It's it's um, yeah, it, it brilliant song. Absolutely brilliant think maybe i might like the music video more than the actual song though <laughs> but there you go i think that's the case for a lot of people they can remember the music video so much yeah. more because the the visuals are so out there that yeah. you're just sort of like yeah 
well, your, your brain connects the two, so it helps. Like it's, you know, everyone remembers the right stripes because those bloody triangles. Like nobody would ever forget that song because the music video is so well created in in such a way that it will be ingrained into your head through even one like viewing of that because it utilizes geometry and repetition, which is really important in music music and visuals. Um, as much as I might hate things that tend to repeat too much, it's yeah, it, it is a quite a critical feature of lyric writing and music writing. Mm. I mean, bring this. <laughs> we went a bit. Uh, we tangented quite a bit, but uh, bringing it in context to this album, I think that's one of the key reasons why I didn't connect with a lot of the album because it was quite repetitive in terms of chord structure, and I found it very... Oh, what's the word? Um... Tedious? Is that the word you're looking for? Yeah, tedious. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you to an extent, but um, uh, I, I, was, I was about four tracks into the album, and I thought, oh, okay, it's this kind of music. It's, you know, it's... For the longest time, I thought he was an English bloke because it was so inspired by Britpop, and and there's lots of elements in there that just scream killers and like like post Britpop, like a bit of like U2 and Blur and that sort of thing. Yeah. And like, mm. um, I was convinced I was listening to the Killers at some point because it's so damn similar. Like his his voice isn't far off, and Killers are a band that I can relate to quite a lot because they've got a certain style of chord writing that is influenced quite a lot by classical music. So they'll have, for example, one of their songs is like, a, you have the fifth chord, which is the G, and then E major, um, and then it leads into the A, which is the relative minor of the key they're in, which is C. For those of you who are music nerds. <laughs> um, and it, that that kind of thing is both classical and pop at the same time it's der- it's a derivative of the classical or that, that, that sort of late classical era yeah but it's it's a, a sort of uh chord pivot i'm not sure what you'd call it um i for- i've forgotten a lot of my musical terms from music a level it's annoying uh but it, it's something that resonates with me because that's that's kind of the same chords that i use to write when i write music and they use a lot of the same chord stru- structures that make me go oh that sounds good but it also works. Um, but yeah, back to um, Prisoner, I think that it offered nothing new. So what it did was, yeah, it was inspired by all these artists um, and it, it it sort of dragged elements from each one, but it didn't offer anything in the mix that was, uh, well, its own flavour. It The way I can describe it is the album only exists in reference to other things. So, you know, it's 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 really bad as a musician if or as any artist really if people are constantly saying to you oh i like this it, it sounds or looks or feels a lot like x or y and that can be bad because if people don't say oh it's like this but but with this thing instead you know so like it's like carpenter brew they write synth wave but they have their own massive flavor in this kind of like satanic uh, driving almost industrial like flavor where, where it gives it that extra thing that makes it its its own existing sort of tangible entity whereas prisoner really didn't for me at least, yeah at least not for me it might have done for other people it it just felt like um, an album that w- could only exist as a culmination of influences um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can have albums like that that make people think of these artists and and these albums that are easier to sort of um, engage with because of that. But when I'm listening to music, I'm always looking for something unique and something that, well, breaks new ground, that pushes it forward. And this album, it felt like it was written a long time ago, even though it was quite recent. Was it 2014 this was released? Um, Oh, no, um, this was released this year. Um, Was it this year? Yeah. Ah. Was it this year? Ah. Um... Yeah, it just it, it it feels dated. It feels like it hasn't really stood the test of time. But for what it is, it's it's kind of fun and it's it's very easy listening. It's something you can just sort of have on in the background and not not really have a need to analyze it, you know, because a lot of the music I listen to is quite complicated and I tend to an- overanalyze it, which means I can't do anything whilst I'm whilst I'm yeah. It, it's a, it's a weird one. 
Yeah, I mean, whilst I was listening to this, I was actually in group chat with a few of my friends, and it did actually work quite well as just... Because I was actually having a panic attack at the time, so it was working quite well as a calming influence for me. I see. So, I, I think that's the thing. Whilst it doesn't really offer anything new, it's it's competent. It's very competently worked, and it offers a relaxing style. Um, uh, yeah. I mean... I, that's true. I'd say the second half of the album is stronger than the first half. Okay. I, I It's weird for me. I think the last three tracks or so mm. all felt way too similar for me, like like far too similar. Uh, a lot of them were like in the same key and used the same kind of chords. There was one song that stood out to me, which I do not know the name of because um, I have a habit of listening to albums, and even if I'll check the names... If there's, in this instance, nothing that really stands out in each track, um, I'll have an issue where, like, I generally can't remember the name of this unless someone were to sing it to me. Um, I have a similar it's... problem. It's sort of like, that's part of the reason why I write up notes or keep uh, Winamp open, so I can basically go, uh, what was yeah. that song? Yeah. Oh, that one. No, no, note to self, do notes next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was one song where... Um, the usual the usual kind of song in that style would have a um a chord sequence that's four bars long yeah um uh, this one was great in that the chord sequences were only three bars mm. um and it just adds that just a little bit of uniqueness to make you go oh okay so this is slightly different it's the same but it's different um and i kind of i hooked onto that and it was it's a nice little feature i think um um Probably one of the songs that stood out to me the most in that album. And there's another another song that I quite enjoy because uh, it uses the stereo field quite well. There's a really nice guitar pan, but it's if you weren't looking out for it, you wouldn't notice it. Uh, but it just sort of slowly goes from left to right. It's a kind of I think it might be a guitar pedal or just a a long sort of droney riff, and it will just it will just you, you sort of follow it as it's going through the stereo pan, which is always fun. I, I enjoy things that make good use of the stereo field. Yeah. I think that might be Shiver and Shake. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, that was one of... Uh, so in my notes, I've actually got five songs in and there's finally something that sounds vaguely interesting. I, I was admittedly a bit harsh on my first listen through. I think I was very yeah. tired, so I was sort of like... Uh. Um, but on a subsequent listen through, it, it was... It's serviceable enough as an album. Uh, I definitely wouldn't give it the ratings that um, the actual review, the professional reviewers have given it, because they've been giving it sort of like four out of five and eighty percent things like that. Which I don't know. That seems a bit gener overly generous. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to know whether or not these, um, because this happens in the gaming industry. Mm. Uh, if in the music industry, reviewers are paid more or given certain favors, wink, wink, to um, produce biased reviews on an album. Yeah. Just so that the uh, musician can go, hey, look at everyone loving my album, even though it's it's not actually that great. Yeah. But I think I think um, in this kind of camp of musicians. It is a lot less about uh, sort of what you write and the, the like tangible content in what you're producing as much as it is your persona, your sort of platform as well. That's really important, especially in the digital age. You need to know where and who to sell it to and your demographic as well. Mm. That's why I tend to enjoy the more underground albums because you feel that a lot of that support and the fans that you get it's a lot more genuine because they're there to support the artist directly. Yeah, it's like um, one particular record label that uh, me and Pierce have covered a fair few times, uh, Blood Music. They feel a lot more connected because right. um, like, I actually tweeted to them that I'd done reviews of some of their artists' albums and they retweeted the stuff. And it's sort of like, wait, what? That actually worked? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You need to try every single um, uh, kind of avenue with promotion. I think that's what these artists tend to do is that a lot of... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll openly admit that a lot of them do get extremely lucky. Yeah. They'll produce some music that's 
rather average and they'll meet that one person that signal boosts them by a million but you never know when you're going to get your signal boosts or how so it, it could be the case that with a lot of these musicians it might not be the music that's driven them forward but, but it's their tenacity their determination to get it out there as it were and i mean i think going back to what it was saying for maybe too long about um albums like this existing only in a reference to other albums and other artists that could be where the success lies because uh artists like that tend to see oh this kind of thing is popular i'll do something like that they, you, you ride the bandwagon essentially whether or not it's still a bandwagon inverted commas or whether it's just a, you know a fad at this point is it's entirely up to them you know it's it yeah that's all i have to say really on that point yeah, sorry, I'm just reading through some of the stuff about um, Ryan Adams. Um, seems like he could be a bit of a diva type, because um, at a concert in October 2002 at Nashville's Ryman Auditorium, someone in the audience yelled out a request for Summer of 69. And what, ha what happened? Ryan reacted with a stream of expletives and ordered the house lights turned on, the Tennessean newspaper reported. He eventually found the fan who made the choke request, paid him $30 cash as a refund for the show, ordered him to leave, and said he would not play another note until he had left. Well, yeah, this is the music business for you. People tend to get on their uh, high horse. And they turn into narcissists, which is sad. Um, but in this instance, I'm willing to separate the art, the art from the artist. I always am. Yeah. And in this, in this case, the art for what it is is it's at least something like you said. It's something nice to relax to and just drift off to. I think. Um, and yeah, maybe at a different point in my life, I'll be able to relate to it more and sort of understand the lyrics for what they are. Yeah. But. As aside from that, it's it's you know nothing to write home about, as one would say. Yeah, I mean, the standout track for me is um, "Breakdown" because that feels much more like just an outright discussion on the matters of depression, anxiety, and just falling apart, mm -hmm. um, and just being incapable of escaping a cycle of pain. But the problem with um, any kind of writing, be it music or, or film, um, any kind of uh, thing in that spectrum on mental health, is that it's a really, really rough ground to tread. It's a sort of uh, very rocky ground because it, it can you can slip one of one of multiple ways in that you could end up writing something that generally comes from the heart and your perspective, but other people don't see it that way. Um, best example being a recent film came out called split i don't know if you've heard of it it's about disassociative identity disorder um but it portrays it in the wrong light and that's the key here if you if you are writing about mental health in quite a direct fashion where you're addressing issues that people have in a way that they'll they'll sort of relate to that and pick up on it and uh, you need to be careful not to paint it in the wrong light or make light of it or, or or even you know you might end up making fun of it and you didn't mean to and that's that's what some artists did i'm not i'm not saying that ryan adams did in this case i haven't had a chance to really look at the lyrics but mental health is one of those almost vague things that it's quite hard to talk about and have every single person understand you unless you've spoken to everyone about it it yeah it's it's one of those sort of gray areas almost yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, the best band that I've heard, well, it's more you've got the lead singer and then you've got a lot of session artists. At least that's the impression that I've got in more recent times. Um, Hurt. Uh, and Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, Hurt and Nine Inch Nails. Those are the best examples I can think of whereby they'll discuss the matter of mental health problems. But it will feel... Wait, it... just to clarify, are you talking about the song Hurt or the band Hurt? The band Hurt. Oh, I thought you meant the song at the end of the Downward Spiral. Oh, ah. well, just... that... <laughs> yeah, that's still... That's, uh... <laughs> but the band Hurt, a lot of their songs... Well, the lead singer, Jay Lauren Wentz, 
he will discuss... Well, it very much comes across like he's discussing his personal experiences with mental health problems and yeah. presenting them to the audience in a way that can be analysed and more asking to understand as opposed to expecting them to understand yes it's in a way that if people don't understand it's okay because that means they can't relate is that what you're saying that it's yes it's yeah I, you're right and it's about the delivery and sort of your intentions if you're if you're writing about mental health just to get a reaction and just to uh, will almost sort of trivialize it and i know there are people that have done that and almost think like oh okay i'm gonna write about mental health now and i get all the support from people that clearly suffer with these issues but it's a lot deeper than that it's a lot you need to have gone through these experiences to a, a, enough of a sort of personal level that you can well you know um a lot of us say that uh, our mental health fuels our music and it um uh, a good friend of mine said that you know, if she doesn't write music after a while she goes walking up the walls and climbing going mad because it's it's a release it's it gets anger and all these emotions out and it helps to label emotions too and the emotions in music they they transfer into everything the lyrics the melody the chords um but most importantly the lyrics and if they get lost in translation then that can be quite dodgy or if they don't come from like it, it's one thing to write about mental health when you have it is another thing for it to be combined with your mental health that fuels the music in a non-literary sense it's another thing to have that combined with what you're writing say if it were not lyrics and then you were to put it into lyrics i think that's the best way because then you're like 100 percent sure that what comes out is is genuinely what you mean instead of something creative to fit the song if you get me yeah it's a bit like uh, one of the last uh, modules i did at uni was um writing for radio okay and i wrote a monologue which was it was based on uh i was in a very awful living situation um i've been in those i, I was living with my ex and oh, her right. boyfriend who used to be my friend, but basically sort of like he was more interested in getting his leg over than actually supporting his friend. That's 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 tricky. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a very um, we were at each other's throats most of the time. So, was, but enough of that. I basically wrote a monologue that was just a stream of consciousness of my attitudes to my various situations the uh, whole, yeah. the whole matter of what was going on with them what was going on with someone who i was in love with but could never be with um were you at a point where uh, all your emotions are bottled up wherever they may be and you had to sit down right that second and and, and right away otherwise it, it would seem either less genuine or it sort of wouldn't come from the same place that's kind of like that isn't it yeah it was exactly that it was just yeah. a right i'm just going to let my creative id flow and see what comes out yeah that's good it got me a 2-1 which says a lot for what i was writing i suppose <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's nice when those uni grades surprise you isn't it i've had a few of them I've written an essay at the last minute and, and gotten a two on for it and gone, how? How did this happen? <laughs> oh, I, I actually had uh, wrote an essay that sort of like, due in two days, I had the flu and I got a first for it. Ah, and I was sort of it. like, I, I, are you sure this is my paper? Well, all that the flu really does is just make you more tired. Like, it just means that... You'll like if it's just common cold, you'll be able to do like the same things but for less time and for less sort of like capacity as well. I think, of course, what probably helped is sort of like the flu was in conflict with my insomnia, so sort of like I was tired but I was too awake to do anything about it. Yeah, totally get you. Um, okay, I think we I think we better close off soon because, um, I have quite a few things to get on with, but um, yeah, so do I, so yeah. um overall thoughts on this album it's serviceable enough um 
it's it's one of the, it really is one of those albums where I just have to sit there and say I, I I enjoy it for what it is, but sadly what it is is something quite average <laughs> at best, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I'd say overall score sort of two point five three out of shuffling shoulder shrugs out of five. Yeah, I I would probably go with two out of five, solid two out of five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was assuming you were going for out of ten, and then I was thinking if out of ten, it would probably be six out of ten. Yeah. So yeah. It, it is a very decidedly average album, but um, it does what it needs to do. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the key here. Yeah, it, it's one of those. I think ultimately, um, I'd ra- I I've got sort of like four t- categories for opinions of albums there's albums i love well, albums i enjoy albums i think do what they need to do albums that annoy me and albums that just do nothing for me you know <laughs> yeah. th- th- this may sound weird but i'd rather be annoyed by music than bored by it ah okay wait explain that i'm interested my uh, reasoning behind that is if you're annoyed by any music, at least it's eliciting an emotional response. I see. So if it if it's well, yeah, for lack of a better word, triggering you, yeah, in a way that yeah, exactly, it, it's sort of uh, uh, inspiring you to feel a certain way because you you might not be annoyed at how bad it is, but it could be something that's like it makes you annoyed because it's political or social or it causes controversy. You know, that's the best kind of music when it's got two sides yeah um, and, it, and it's got a sort of hidden meaning beneath it and 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 it's rebellious in every way you know yeah whereas if it's something that bores me well it's just for me if music bores you it's failed as music <laughs> yep yep definitely um i mean there are some cases where um music if good example is john cage's four minutes 33 seconds music it in that sense is not meant to bore you but by you know erasing sound which is what the piece does it's just nothing and a bunch of performers sitting there playing nothing but they've got their instruments they're just not playing anything because there's nothing on the score they just sit there for four minutes 33 but you're meant to analyze the world around you and treat that as music instead or at least that's what i got from that piece um so in that case i guess it's 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 initially boring you because you're going, oh, this is boring. But then your subconscious is listening to all the other sounds that you wouldn't hear if the band was playing something. So yeah, I think. I think. But I think, in the general sense, yeah, music. If it just bores you, then it's kind of pointless. It's it's art without the the main sort of uh, purpose of art in the first place. <laughs> yeah, it it's art without passion. Yeah, I mean, I, I you can have music. You can have passionless music that isn't boring. Mm. That's the thing, but you can also have music with a bunch of passion that's still boring. I don't think those two are uh, directly linked, but they do inspire each other definitely. Yeah, um, but yeah, this this falls into my. It's an okay album. Um, it's it is worthwhile listening to. It's not yeah. it's not like some albums that I've covered where I'm sort of like, don't listen to this album if you value your sanity. Yeah. I think I'd put it like in the sort of realm of in between the sort of cheesy level of uh, what have I listened to recently that's just incredibly cheesy. Uh, a whole lot of things. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in my sort of list of I really don't want to have to listen to it very often again. But if it comes up in my iTunes by accident, then I won't have a hissy fit. Like <laughs> in a way, it will be fun because it will remind me of this fun little guest show that i did <laughs> <laughs> and um i guess that's a wrap is it yeah that's it for this episode and again no idea what will be in the next episode um might have clark and i on again might be back to pierce it depends on who's free and all that sort of thing have i got the job <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> this isn't no comment <laughs> Well, you're certainly the go-to if I'm in a, oh, shit, he's not free. Okay. Up, up shit creek, yeah. yeah. We'll get back to you on that. 
totally. Now it's been it's been great chatting to you, Edward. Been a good show. Uh, um, I don't know. I called you Edward there, Edmund, Edward Edmund. They're pretty similar. Apologies. The easy way to remember is I am actually named after Blackadder. Ah. My brother's twelve years older than me, and he suggested my name, and he was a big fan of Blackadder at the time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Brilliant. But yeah, uh, I will work out what will be next in next episode. I wish I could actually figure out these things in advance, but a lot of it is me just going, uh, okay, that album's out now. So <laughs> let's do that. Whatever makes us drone on about things. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Feel like I'm headed for a breakdown Feel like I'm headed for a breakdown Feel like I'm racing and I can't